Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we are going to get started with MX Linux. So what I want to do with this is we're going to start with the brand new version of MX Linux, uh, which just came out recently, and then we are going to uh, get it installed and then walk through some of the first steps that you might want to do when you are getting started with MX. So MX is good in that it is a lightweight distribution based on Debian, but it has a lot of extra tools and features in it, meaning that it's going to have that very similar FOSS philosophy to Debian. It's not going to have Ubuntu connections for those that don't necessarily want to do much with Ubuntu, but uh, it also is going to have an easier ability to add newer software than you might otherwise think. There are a few different desktop options. We have XFCE and KDE, and we also have Fle uh, Flexbox. So uh, what we're going to look at is the regular um, XFCE version of this. So the first thing we're going to do, let's just go ahead and uh, have a brief look over at their website. And so over here at mxlinux.org, you can download it. There's hardware support, and they also do Antix Linux, which, um, you know, I've, I've done some controversial videos on that one as well, um, not for the distribution, but for other reasons. Um, but uh, I use MX Linux on my writing computer, so I actually write my books on MX Linux and do uh, a lot of the uh, actual print production. So when you write a book and you send it to be printed into a paperback or a hardback book, I do all of that production also on MX Linux. I also do the eBooks on MX Linux. The only thing I don't generally do is the book covers because that computer is a super low spec computer. It does not run GIMP as well as I need it to, to actually do book covers. So you can come over here and hit the download button, and then this is going to give you to your different options. So the current one is MX21, and uh, we actually have some unofficial respins, MX Base, MX Raspberry Pi. Maybe I might experiment with that sometime soon. There's MX Workbench. So the XFCE is the flagship. They have the... Um, uh, they have the 64-bit uh, and the 32-bit options as well. We also have an advanced hardware support. So for very recent hardware, it ships with a newer kernel. They have the KDE, which I believe the KDE is also AHS. And then Fluxbox has 64 and 32-bit. You can grab it from the direct repos, mirrors, or torrents. So you can go ahead and do all of that. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to set this up in a uh, virtual machine. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to get my virtual machine all set up and, uh, and good to go. So here we are. We have a few options now. VirtualBox Video should give us um, it should give us our our video options. Now we do have here the ability to change our screen resolution. So I'm going to go ahead and change that to 1920 by 1080. And then we'll go ahead and enter that. And hopefully, if that does what it's supposed to do, then we should actually boot full screen. If we don't, then we can just go ahead and do our command to make it full screen. So let's see what happens here. And so we have indeed booted full screen. This is our default here. So we have a welcome screen with right at the top is the install. There's uh, information down here. There's tools. Now, one of the cool things about MX Linux is the way it is designed and the installer works. You can come in here. You can add new um, software, all sorts of other things. You can make some settings changes and tweaks right here on the live version. And then when you install, there's an option to push any of the changes you made in this live environment to the installed environment. There is also an option where you can create an ISO image from your, uh, your build at any time. So this does make this a very good uh, operating system for a corporate environment where you're going to have a, uh, a number of different computers using the same Linux distribution. You can spin up one of them, save the, um, save the image files, and then use that to install on every computer, which is going to save you a lot of time down the road. We do have here 
the username and the password here, which is so useful because many distributions don't include this information so easy and you need to go hunt for it. It's not always uh, easy to find. So the basic user is demo demo. The super user is root with password root. So it makes things a lot easier. So that's one of the reasons I like MX Linux. I'm not a huge fan of the bar on the side. That's more of a matter of personal preference. We'll show you how you can change that after we get everything installed. Because the first step here is just go ahead and get it, get the platform installed. Now, this installer is a little bit different than some of the other ones, but it is also one of the best. So what we have here is we can decide what we're gonna do. We can customize the disk layout. We can install, regular install using the entire disk. So I have a um, uh, 25 gigabyte virtual disk drive in here. We can encrypt it right here and give it an encryption password. I'm not going to bother with that since this is just a uh, virtual machine install. If we do these options, it's going to ask us, is it okay to format the disk? So now we are, it is beginning the installation process and now we have some other decisions. Where do you want to install Grub, um, the master boot record, partition boot record, or EFI file system partition. So you have those options. In this case, keeping it on the master boot record of this particular disk. Now, if you had multiple disks in here, then you have the choices to where to put Grub. And this is a really good thing because when you're installing Linux, particularly on a computer that has multiple hard drives in it, oftentimes Grub will automatically be installed on the first hard drive, even if you're installing Linux on the second. This is one of the distributions that will easily allow you to decide where exactly it's going to install. So network names, you can do the MS networking, you can enable it or disable it. Since my uh, internal file system does use uh, Samba for server networking, I'm going to go ahead and leave it. And all the defaults are just fine for me. Here we can set our localities. So our time zone is good. Our language is good. We can decide if we want 24 or 12 hour system and then we can use local time or not. And then there are a bunch of server, um, just a lot of things. So I don't have Bluetooth on this computer, so I just turn that off. If you don't want to use printing, if you don't have a printer, you don't have a need for it, you can disable cups. If you are going to print, make sure you leave that enabled. So there's a lot of different options that you can come in here and toggle on and off as, uh, as you have, um, have need. So right now it's actually paused the installation because it's actually installing faster than I can walk you through it, which means this is a really good installer. So let's go ahead and do MX Linux as our username. We're going to enter my super secret password that's definitely not 123. And then we can create a root account or we can disable it. Some Linux distributions have root account disabled. Some of them have it. This one gives you the option. You can hit auto log login and this this is the option, save any changes you made to the live, uh, any of those. So desktop modifications made in the live environment will carry it over to the installed OS. So that's a very cool option. So now it's going to go ahead and uh, do those final steps. And then once it is done, then we will just need to restart. You can see here it is installing Grub. So now it says it is finished. We can automatically reboot when the installer is closed. So we'll go ahead and hit that button there, and then now it's going to go through and do the reboot. It's telling us to hit enter to kick the disk out. Of course, if you are installing this, that's the time when you need to pull that disk out of your, uh, your computer. In this case, on the virtual machine, it will pop it out for me automatically. And then it's going to proceed through its boot up, and they will land on a login screen. Okay, so our login screen is not full screen. It should stay full screen once we log in and change the settings. It may not keep the full screen on the first time it bo boots, uh, just because we're on a virtual machine. Obviously, if you were installing it on, a, uh, on real hardware, it would. And we can see here that it indeed has. So now it's, uh, we're just going to wait for that desktop to catch up. It should get there. There it goes. And now we have a very similar welcome screen. It just doesn't have the installer. So let's go ahead and walk through what is over here. Any frequently asked questions, we have these guys pop up over here. So you can go ahead and look at um, the different questions here. 
We have the user's manual, the wiki. Now the tools panel and the tweak are going to be some of the tools that you have built in. So in addition to the standard XFCE settings panel, which you can come in here and find up here in the settings, this is your settings panel, which is fairly uh, standard among your various XFCEs. There are a few other options. You can see MX Tweak, MX Tools. The MX Tools is this menu here. These are things that are specific to MX Linux. This is that live USB maker, so you can make a lot of changes here. Use this guy, create the, the live USB stick, and then use that as a means to transfer this installation to other computers. And then the snapshot, we can create a live ISO of your, your current running system. Now, the other tools that we have, boot options will allow you to change your uh, your various boots. So if you have multiple, com um, multiple different uh, uh, hard drives or install options, you can choose what boot options you're doing. We can um, do a rescue scan. If your boot is not working, we can get into a boot repair. Cleanup will get uh, old files, help you clean out old files. Menu editor will allow you to adjust your various menus over here. And then user management. Now, if you're running NVIDIA, you have the option here to click this guy to install proprietary NVIDIA drivers. You'll notice this is a common trend among Linux distributions because oftentimes NVIDIA drivers are not open source. And so you only want them installed if you happen to need them. So Conky is your settings over here. This tells you your um, uh, your RAM usage and things like that. You can make some adjustments to it. We have the tweak. This guy here is for your panel. So when you first load this guy up, then it's going to save a backup of your panel. So you can see here, restore the old panel configuration. So here we can display the panel on the left or on the right or on the top or the bottom. I generally like the panels on the bottom. And so that's exactly what I do with it is I just hit that, that guy there to um, move it. We have the dock like options. You can do a variety of different uh, color schemes and things like that. You can change the theme around a little bit. So there's a couple of uh, different options that we have inside of here. You can just change your icons, window manager, and applications. Here's your resolution. So go ahead and make any of these final tweaks. Now, if you mess something up, hit the apply. It's going to restore your panel back to the last known configuration. So there it goes. So now it's back up to how it was. So that's how you can make those adjustments. Now, if you want to make some uh, make some changes to it, you can go ahead and do that. Um, you can add new items. Now, XFCE doesn't have quite as much of your lock option as, uh, for example, Cinnamon would. So here you can remove options. Um, under the panel, you can add new items. So if you want to do launchers, you can do this. Here's separators, action buttons. Uh, if you're running on a laptop, um, the battery monitor is there, but you can go ahead and uh, add that. Let me just go ahead and remove that. So just right click it. So then to add it right back on. Now note there is a um, battery monitor. That's not the one we removed. The one we removed is actually the power manager. So there are a few of them. So just be aware of that. We can drop it down there where we want it. And then we can right click, hit move, and then we can move it anywhere else in the panel. So that's kind of where it was. So you can add and remove a couple different options in here. Some of these I take out, like on the desktop, I don't want the batteries on there. So you might tweak those. Um, you might want, um, uh, I might want a screenshot option. So doing a screenshot option, right click. Now I can, no, don't remove it. Uh, right click, move it. So this here will allow me to just click a button and grab a quick screenshot. That's actually a very useful tool for some applications that you might do. Uh, system load, there's a trash applet, weather updates. There's a lot of different options that you have so you can add and remove things on. So other things, I tend to remove workspace switchers because I don't use workspaces personally. So there's a lot of different options that you have to make adjustments to your panel. 
So these are some of the things that, that are, are very handy inside of this. Now, the next thing that we want to do is we want to look at packages on MX Linux. So if I look at generally in any given Linux distribution, if you go to this, the menu and just type in software, you're going to find whatever is being used to install software. Now, MX Linux has a few options. It has a package installer. It has Synaptic Package Manager, it has a GDEB package installer. Now this just allows you to install .deb files, so you generally don't have to mess around with that one. Synaptic is your, your good old fashioned um, installer, it looks like this, where it's just lists of different things and very useful. I really like this tool, it's just not a tool that I use a lot. Now the other things though it will have is MX Linux also has the MX package installer. This one here is going to be a little bit easier for most people because it's going to have everything sorted out a little bit better. So audio packages, we have a variety of different audio things, Audacious, so audio players, audio editors, web browsers. This is one of the ones that will allow you to install uh, Brave easily. We can do Firefox or Firefox ESR. We can install Google Chrome, um, Vivaldi. Uh, I would not use Waterfox. It's compromised these days. Here's some children's tools. If you want alternative desktop environments, we can install Bungie, Gnome, KDE5, LXDE, and Mate. So there are other options there. So you can kind of see here that there's a lot of different options, very easy to use. Now, also within this, I mentioned that it's easier to install older package, or I'm sorry, newer packages on top of Debian. That's because it actually has a Debian backports. We do get a warning, um, so we're going to not show that again. So at the Debian backports is going to do is backports are updated packages that have not yet been officially rolled into Debian. So if you're looking for something, you can actually search for it here and you can find some, some more updated op options. So if we do LibreOffice, for example, if I spell office right, we do LibreOffice uh, this guy here is going to give us a newer version of LibreOffice than that, which might be in the official repositories. So we do have a lot, a lot of different options there. MX test repositories, let me clear that out. So this is some other packages, um, which may or may not be the same versions we have. Here's your stable repositories. So we have our popular applications, very easy to sort, the stable, the test, and the backport repositories, meaning you can choose a variety of different options. Now we also have flat packs. So flat pack, of course, is your, um, uh, this is your system to allow you to have packages that are, um, uh, just kind of packages that are going to be developed by and released by the software distributors themselves. They'll update more frequently, uh, so you might want that. In my case, I generally don't like that, so I generally don't use flat packs unless I have to. But we do have the option here, and what it's doing is it's going online and finding all the different flat packs. So then you can search for whatever you're looking for here, and you can install the flat packs from wherever they're coming from. You can see that we have um, elementary flat packs. We have things from uh, FlatHub. So there's a few different repositories already configured inside of here. There are over a thousand flat packs available. So you can come in here and install whatever features and options that you might want to use. So these are some of the uh, options that we have. So what you might want to do is go through and just add your uh, various software that you might like. Now you can look around your MX Linux here and just do uh, a look at what software is available. In my case, when I'm producing, uh, ju just creating a um, uh, a system that I'm using in production, I like going through and removing applications I know I'm not going to use. So if I were using this in production, I'm going to uninstall all the games because I don't really need them. Uh, I generally don't build a production computer for gaming stuff, but I'll have a look at what all is in here and I will go ahead and add the things I need to add. I will remove the things I need to remove. So overall, that is really how to get started with MX Linux if you are um, if you are interested in using it. Let's talk about some um, uh, adding your shortcuts there. So let's do 
Let's see, you might want email. Right click, you can add it to favorites. That's gonna put it in your favorites applications. Desktop's gonna give you your classic desktop icon and add the panel, we'll create it as a launcher. Now it adds the panel. Every time you add something to the panel without telling it directly where to go, it always adds to the very, very uh, right here, or I think it's the very top if it's on the side. Um, so I have my panel, of course, down there. So we're gonna right click hit the move option, and then we're just gonna put it where we want it to be. So we'll go ahead and do that. All right, so you can right click this, you can remove it if you want. Now in in uh, these ones here, uh, so this one is pinned to the dock. This one is actually a launcher. In XFCE, your launchers are all separate. Some distributions that have launchers will have one launcher application, and then you define the applications in there. This one, each launcher is separate and independent, so you can control them all, all separately. So here is, uh, here's your office tools. And then we just we do have a lot of software in here that is very useful for production type work. So I think we've covered most of the basics on uh, getting started there, except your updates. So MX Linux has its own update packager over here. It will give you a notification about updates and it will give you notifications when new updates are available. When you click on this here, then we have a list of individual packages and we have the option here to upgrade um, the packages. So there is your MX Linux. It is a wonderful distribution, particularly for a lighter weight computer. That's what I tend to use this on because Linux Mint will not work quite as well on those computers. So I turn to MX Linux on most of those. Hopefully this is a nice guide to teach you some of the basics about getting started with it. And really Linux is easy to use. So give it a try, especially since you can try out many Linux distributions with out changing your current computer. So if you have any other specific questions, leave them down in the comments. And I'll do my best to get to those comments and reply to them as I can. So thank you for watching and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.